Nikola Tesla standing there with this old farmer where he's running his whole farm on this device where he has stakes in the ground tapping into this electromagnetic and mostly magnetic flux field and running generators running his farm. How does a machine dead for 80 years suddenly roar to life? This isn't a ghost story. It's what just happened in a New York lab. A long lost device built by Nikola Tesla himself, a piece of his legendary Wardenclyffe Tower, was found in a sealed crate. When a research team tried to scan it with a harmless low power tool, the machine exploded with power, throwing lightning across the room and forcing a 60 person evacuation. We'll show you the exclusive details of the event, the physics behind the surge, and the dangerous truth about resonance it just revealed. Tesla Estate, high voltage, do not open. You see, after Nikola Tesla passed away in 1943, his belongings were seized by the government. Most of his papers were eventually declassified, but many of his physical devices were scattered, lost, or locked away. This crate was one of them. For 82 years, it sat unopened. The team, armed with clearance and a lot of curiosity, decided it was time to see what was inside. The air was thick with the smell of old wood and dust. With a screech of metal, they pried the lid off. Inside, wrapped in thick, oiled canvas, was a stunning piece of scientific history. It was a copper coil as tall as a man, maybe six feet high. The wire was wound by hand with a precision that was almost hypnotic. It sat on a base of dark, heavy wood studded with gleaming ceramic insulators. A small brass nameplate was bolted to the base, stamped with a single chilling word, Warden Cliff. This was it. Not just a simple Tesla coil, but a high-frequency resonator, one of Tesla's final, improved transmitters built sometime in the 1920s, long after his famous Wardenclyffe Tower had been torn down. What many overlooked was that this device was a ghost. It was never cataloged. It never appeared in any declassified files. It simply shouldn't have existed. The team was ecstatic. They carefully moved the device to a testing bay in the basement lab. They weren't trying to turn it on. Their goal was simple, catalog it. One engineer following standard procedure brought over a modern spectrum analyzer. In simple terms, this machine sends out a tiny harmless signal to map the resonance curve of a device, basically to find out what frequency it rings at like a tuning fork. It's a standard safe diagnostic tool. The engineer connected the analyzer's probes to the coil's terminals. The signal was tiny, just 10 milliwatts, a whisper of energy completely harmless. The engineer hit the sweep button. The analyzer began to send its low power signal starting at a low frequency and climbing. And then the coil responded. It didn't hum, it didn't spark, it screamed. A blinding two million volt arc of raw electricity exploded from the top of the coil. It jumped 12 feet across the lab, striking a metal shelving unit with a sound like a thunderclap. The shelf glowed white hot and molten metal dripped to the floor. The air filled instantly with the sharp chemical smell of ozone. High voltage detectors mounted on the walls tripped instantly. Alarms began to cascade, not just in the basement, but through three floors of the science building. Emergency lights kicked on, flooding the corridor with flashing red. The evacuation order was automatic. 60 people, students, professors, and the stunned research team cleared the building in just under four minutes. They ran for their lives, leaving the device behind. No one was hurt, but the lab was in chaos. And here's the kicker. The resonator was still pulsing. Even with the analyzer off, it was still thrumming with power, drawing energy from somewhere. Finally, a panicked engineer managed to shut down every main breaker in the basement. The arc died and the screaming stopped. Silence. Then hundreds of questions. How does an 80-year-old unplugged device suddenly surge like that? Where did millions of volts of energy come from? And why did a 10 milliwatt input trigger a megavolt discharge? The answer wasn't a ghost, it was physics. Tesla's vicious echo. The answer ties together modern power grids, forgotten Tesla patents, and one incredibly dangerous truth about resonance. The thing nobody tells you is that this wasn't magic. It was a collision. A collision between old analog era design and new digital age precision. Think of it this way, a singer can shatter a wine glass with just their voice. They don't do it with volume. They do it by finding the exact natural frequency of the glass. When the note from their voice matches the note of the glass perfectly, the vibrations start to add up. Each tiny vibration stacks on top of the last, amplifying the energy until the glass physically tears itself apart. 
the Tesla coil was that wine glass. And the modern spectrum analyzer was the singer. You see, Tesla built his resonators to hit frequencies around maybe 100 kilohertz. His power sources were crude by today's standards, massive steam turbines and rotary spark gaps. They were noisy, unstable, and hard to control. But a 2025 signal generator, that's a different beast entirely. Modern electronics use materials like silicon carbide and gallium nitride. These are wide band gap semiconductors, a fancy term for materials that can handle voltages and frequencies Tesla could only sketch on paper. A solid state driver today can excite frequencies at 10 megahertz with surgical precision. And here's the most important part. The testing was automated. The analyzer was guided by an AI testing algorithm. The AI's job is to hunt for resonance peaks. A human technician from Tesla's time, or even from the 1980s, might take hours or even days to manually dial in a perfect resonance. The AI? It can sweep through a million frequencies in 30 seconds. That's the collision point. An old coil designed for rough analog tuning met a modern digital signal that found its weak spot instantly. When the team's analyzer swept past the resonator's natural frequency, somewhere around 700 kilohertz, it turns out, the circuit locked on. Energy began amplifying. Each cycle of the tiny signal added more voltage. The coil climbed from millivolts to megavolts in a fraction of a second. That perfect match, that note, triggered the violent arc. Let's picture the realistic sequence. A technician sets the spectrum analyzer on a metal cart, maybe three feet from the resonator. Too close, the device begins its automatic AI-guided sweep. The analyzer's output lead runs near the primary coil of the resonator. Inductive coupling kicks in. The magnetic field from the probe talks to the coil. The sweep crosses 700 kilohertz, dead center of the coil's tuning range. The circuit wakes up. Voltage doubles every microsecond. A feedback loop forms. The resonator starts pulling energy not just from the analyzer, but from the lab's own power mains through the ground wire, even from ambient radio noise in the air. All of it is funneled into the secondary coil. The high voltage detectors on the ceiling sense the air ionizing, the first step of a lightning bolt. Ozone floods the room. The safety system triggers. Strobes flash. The evacuation alarm sounds. The team makes it out. The breakers trip. The arc dies. But there's a second piece to this puzzle, a piece that Tesla himself designed. Earth coupling. If this coil coupled to the building's ground network, the surge had help, and that, to put it mildly, changes everything. Warden Cliff's true goal. You see, Nikola Tesla didn't just build coils, he built systems. And the biggest part of his system was the planet itself. His resonators were designed to use the Earth as part of the circuit. This isn't a metaphor. He meant it literally. Many people are crazy about Tesla's wireless power idea, but they think he was trying to beam it through the air like a radio tower. The thing nobody tells you is that his real plan was to send it through the ground. Back in 1899, at his experimental station in Colorado Springs, Tesla built his most powerful coil. And the first thing he did was drive a massive copper rod 200 feet deep into the ground. He tuned his coil so that the current flowed down into the soil and returned through the air. He wasn't just making lightning, he was ringing the entire planet like a bell. He wanted to turn the earth into a massive conductor that anyone anywhere could tap into for power. That was the real secret of Wardenclyffe. So how does that connect to a chaotic lab in 2025? Modern buildings are, in effect, giant grounding grids. Think about it, every single electrical outlet, every metal water pipe, every steel rebar beam inside the concrete floors and walls, it's all connected to a massive electrical web buried under the floor. It's a spider web of metal. When the resonator surged, it didn't just arc through the air, it coupled into the building's ground system. The pulse found those paths. Current flowed through the electrical conduits, through the rebar, even through the moisture in the concrete itself. Suddenly, any nearby piece of metal became an antenna. The filing cabinets, the ventilation ducts, and yes, the metal shelving unit that caught the 12-foot arc. For a brief, violent moment, the entire lab transformed into part of the circuit. Picture your house wiring as that huge metal spider web. The AI-guided analyzer with its perfect surgical precision hit the one note that made the whole web hum, and that hum amplified the power to a terrifying degree. The system wasn't haunted, it was optimized by an AI that had no idea what it was waking up. 
No malice, just math. This explains the 2 million volt surge. It explains the chaos. But it doesn't explain all of it. What if the energy didn't just come from the analyzer and the building's power? What if the machine was already awake? The coming wave of lost tech. What if the surge wasn't entirely an accident? We're not talking about sabotage or a prank. We're talking about something much subtler, something that happens more often than labs want to admit. Some coils, especially ones as perfectly tuned as Tesla's, can act as passive receivers. They don't need a power source to activate. They just need the right frequency to pass nearby. You see, Tesla's resonators were built to couple with distant transmitters. That was their entire purpose. And what is New York City? It is, to put it mildly, the most radio frequency dense environment on the planet. It is flooded with energy. We're talking about thousands of transmitters, cell towers broadcasting between 600 megahertz and six gigahertz, Wi-Fi routers in every room, FM radio stations from 80 to 100 megahertz, emergency services on VHF and UHF, and most importantly, the AM broadcast band. And here's the absolute kicker. What was the resonance peak of that 80-year-old coil? Around 700 kilohertz. That is dead center in the AM broadcast band. For 80 years, that coil may have been sitting in its crate, silently soaking up energy from all the AM radio stations in the city, like a battery slowly accumulating a charge. The analyzer's input cable, acting like an antenna, picked up this ambient radio frequency energy and fed it straight into the resonator. When the AI sweep signal hit that perfect 700 kilohertz note, it was like a key in a lock. It didn't just test the circuit, it completed it. All that stored energy, gathered for decades, discharged all at once. The result looks like it powered on by itself, but in reality, it was induction. It was coupling, it was radio waves doing what they always do, finding resonant structures and pouring energy into them. This is the real danger. This is why the evacuation was so critical. High voltage arcs create ozone and nitrogen oxides. Breathe in enough of that and your lungs chemically burn. But there's a worse danger. What many overlooked is the age of the device. Old dielectrics, the insulating materials and capacitors from that era often contained polychlorinated biphenyls or PCBS. These are hideously toxic compounds banned since the 1970s. When old capacitors overheat and vent, they release PCB fumes. Those fumes can cause neurological damage. The evacuation wasn't just for the sparks, it was for the air. The thing is, people watching this are looking for a mystery. Are we missing a key detail? Did this all happen overnight or was this a ticking time bomb? This lab chaos is a warning. Universities and museums hold thousands of these forgotten devices, industrial relics, Cold War prototypes, a brass coil that looks like a sculpture might be a volatile hazard, just waiting for the right cell phone signal or Wi-Fi frequency to wake it up. But here's the unbelievable upside. This incident isn't just a failure, it's a blueprint. Engineers can finally learn the design secrets buried in this artifact. We have to remember, Tesla built this by hand. There was no simulation software, no supercomputer modeling. It was pure, unfiltered intuition, a connection to physics our sterile labs have lost. And with that intuition, he achieved staggering efficiencies. Efficiencies our best modern designers, with all their terabytes of data, still struggle to match. By studying how he did it, we could unlock a new age. This isn't just about convenience. We're talking about fundamentally safer wireless charging for our homes and vehicles. We're talking about efficient power beaming, keeping vital drones in the air indefinitely. We could even develop revolutionary medical implants, powered right through the skin, no surgery required for a battery change. So let's close the loop on what happened. An antique resonator, a museum piece, surged with catastrophic power. It wasn't ghosts. It wasn't hidden batteries. It wasn't some long debunked perpetual motion trick. The cause was far more tangible. Resonance made it possible. The perfect forgotten frequency. Coupling made it dangerous. The old device hijacking the new. It wasn't plugged in, so is Tesla's machine still on, silently gathering power right now? Tell us your theory below. Like and subscribe for more.